What is up, everybody? Back again for another draft. Kenji, that is to say. And uh, we got ourselves a nice little vintage cube. Ah, uh, yes. A fine vintage indeed. So, quick refresher. Vintage cube has all of the power nines of the most uh, busted cards in Magic. In addition to the power nine. You're going to see a lot of busted things, but uh, oftentimes a good cohesive deck with some interruption can just be good enough as well. Anyways, let's jump right into our pack and see what we have. Uh, Vampiric Tutor, very, very good. Chalice is great. Ulama, good. Plow Under, Copter. All great choices. Just depends on what kind of direction you want to go. Um, I don't know what I'm feeling like. I think normally Vampiric Tutor is just a good choice, though. It lets you do so many different things, whether that be combo off, uh, find your combo piece, or just find some, you know, one of your best cards. So we'll see what taking the uh, taking the Vampiric Tutor pick one, pack one can lead us to. And what did we get? Mox Diamond is always great. Duretti and Mana Flare are interesting. Oh, I don't know why that doesn't have any art. Remand is good, but I think the most broken card in this pack, or at least the card that can lead to the most broken circumstances, is going to be the Mox Diamond. So let's try taking this and see what we can do from there as we get ourselves ooh, a little baby Teferi. Is it Signet? Jace, Uro, Force of Negation is great. Noble Hierarch is very good as well. Hmm. I think I maybe feel like doing a little bit of control nonsense. Let's take the Teferi and see what happens. Obviously, Teferi is not a very fun card. Might be fun for the person playing it, but uh, it's a card that is just way too good, period. I think, uh, I think the power level of cards in the most recent years has, uh, well, not even think. It definitely has, you know, far eclipsed um, anything that we could have ever expected. And, you know, you see cards like Teferi in Vintage now, even. Anyways, uh, let's take our next card here. Probably just going to go with the Force of Will. Good follow-up to Teferi. Could see myself definitely doing some nice control nonsense. We did pass Remand and Force of Negation, but Force of Will seems like a really good one. And if we're lucky, we might wheel like the Sun Titan. Sun Titan with Teferi, another nice little combo of sorts there. Other good cards, Rabble Master, Ruins, Metamorph, Plateau, and even Yorian in this pack. Looks like the Companions are uh, cards they recently added to the Vintage Cube, but we'll just take the Force of Will. Feels like that goes pretty nicely online with what we're already planning or looking to do. Yeah, how about a Shark Typhoon now as well? <laughs> Why not continue what uh, what we've already started? I am passing a Day of Judgment here in Wall of Omens, which also look like they could do some wonders, but, I mean, Shark Typhoon, it does it all. It draws cards, it makes flyers, it can draw a card and make flyers, I don't know. Seems good enough to take. <clears throat> Anyways, next pick. Uh, maybe a Torrential Gearhulk here also looks very, very good. We already have two decent cards that it can hit. Remember, this only hits instants, not sorceries. But, uh, you know, this is only pack one. Um, Cryptic Command maybe comes back around. Remand, unlikely. But, you know, if any number of others, uh, other counters come back, we can, we can definitely utilize that pretty well. And again, even as it stands, we have two fine hits. So it's not even, like, bad if I never picked up another instant. It's just a fine win con and... Controlly blue deck. Anyways, um, corset out or corset has been out now for a little while, and uh, I've been enjoying it quite a bit as far as um, those sets are concerned. Um, but always good to change things up with a little vintage cube, though I'm not going with the <laughs> the, the storm deck this time. Okay, next pick we have, ooh, some good cards indeed. Mishra's Workshop, very, very good. Through the Breach, Mind Slaver, Elspeth Sun's Champion. All great cards. I think the card that's probably going to fit most on in line with what we're doing is the Elspeth, but I do like myself a good Mind Slaver. And the thing is, 
Uh, if you recall, we did pass what the Academy Ruins earlier. And so it does require a lot of mana, yes, but Mind Slaver and Academy Ruins, you can uh, potentially set up um, lethal by taking all of your opponent's extra turns. But I think I like just taking the Elspeth here. Seeing what we get past. Winds of Abandon, Savannah, Soulfire Grandmaster, Control Magic, Gideon. Soulfire Grandmaster is pretty darn nice with counters and whatnot. Um, and even though I think Gideon is great, the potential to now maybe pick up like Time Walk and go infinite with Soulfire Grandmaster, Time Walk, or even um, Soulfire Grandmaster and Time Warp seems like a good play. Another tutor here if we wanted to, although it doesn't find many hits just yet. We do have Terminus. Uh, and I think I might just take the Selesnya Signet here, as it is one of our colors. Seems like a fine choice. Okay, Wield the Path, that's good. There's that Mana Flare now, back with Art. Looks like this, I think this is the Remand pack, so maybe that's gone. Which probably means we're not likely to see Cryptic Command, although I don't remember what exact pack it was in, but... Yeah, Pact of Negation... Remand, Cryptic Command. Those were all the cards that we were hoping to wheel, though we didn't really expect them to. Galdish Shrine, though, was a great pickup. Like, I already have the uh, Vampiric Tutor, so makes splashing that tutor much, much easier. And mana in this format in Vintage Cube is just very good. That is to say, you know, you have, like, all the fetch lands, you have the shocks, you have the OG duels, you have, I mean, a bunch of other lands, so it's not hard to go three, four, even five color, and still have good mana. Even though that doesn't seem like it should necessarily be the case, especially for a uh, a draft format. But remember, this is this is the high power draft format. As we did wheel the Sun Titan. Looks like if I had taken the uh, Mind Slaver, we would indeed get the Academy Ruins for it. But without playing green or getting a bunch of uh, mana rocks, going uh, infinite that, with that is a little bit harder because you need 13 mana effectively to uh to loop academy ruins and mind slaver so we'll take the sun titan it gets back our teferi Ooh, gets back our wall of omens now as well in fact sun titan just looks really good in our deck mox diamond pitches a land which sun titan can get back uh grand soulfire grand master selecting a signet to fairy and now wall of omens all things we can get back with it obviously bane slayer angels and an amazing creature but <laughs> it's uh Honestly, it's just fine in Vintage Cube when you could be doing so many more broken things. Um, doesn't look like blue was particularly open, but I'm hoping to get uh, a lot of blue in this pack because we didn't pass um, too much good blue. I mean, we passed a few counters, but we have OG Counterspell here, or we could take Gideon. And I think I like taking the Counterspell. Now we have Counterspell and, like, Soulfire Grandmaster. Ooh. Yeah, that's juicy. Hopefully Gideon wheels, but that doesn't seem super likely. Or maybe chart a course, but let's just go with the Counter. As we pick ourselves up either a Vendillion Click or an Elspeth Conquers Death. Both seem pretty good. I think I like the uh, Flashy Flash of the Click more than the Elspeth Conquers. There's Telerian Academy, Watery Grave. I think we're probably going to take the Watery Grave here just for some extra black fixing for the Vampiric Tutor. Also makes splashing a black card a lot easier. For example, if we wheel that Lingering Souls, we can definitely take it and play it if we really wanted to. Don't think we want Jace, and Land Tax is fine, but I've never been super impressed with it. All right, and now Polluted Delta seems like an easy pickup. This pack is pretty darn stacked, though. Emrakul's insane. Reanimate's very good. Courser, Delta. Hard to pass a fetch. Gets all of our colors already. Mm, Sphinx's Rev, Grave Titan. Lion's Eye Diamond. Linval is actually pretty good as well. Could also consider splashing a Fiomancer here. I'm just going to take the Sphinx's Rev. I mean, I took Counterspell, I took Click. This feels like the perfect scenario where we'd want to take Sphinx's Rev. This might not be the most open uh, archetype, but we've got a pretty solid deck so far. Would love to get some more early interaction, though. 
some more blue cards, even if it's just like days, miscalculation, that type of thing. Those would be very, very good here. Oh man, next pack has a bunch of spicy cards here. Fallen Shinobi, Toxic Deluge, Upheaval, O-Ring. Oh man, this isn't really an Upheaval deck, but Upheaval gets you out of situations that uh, are basically unwinnable otherwise. It's just I don't think this is the correct shell for the deck. I'm kind of tempted to take the Fallen Shinobi, even though we don't have too many ways to... Uh, to really get it through ninjutsu style, but the card is so good. All right, let's try checking the Shinobi. Um, even though with this deck, ah, no, you know what? Toxic Deluge has just gotta be the pick. We, we need some Wrath effects and that's, that's just way too good. Okay, another really strong pack here. This is what, pick seven. Wow, pick seven, Jite, Absent, Frantic, and some lands. Uh, Jite a lot worse in Legacy, or sorry, in Vintage Cube where the power level of everything is just spiked up for the most part. So, like, um, creature-based decks aren't necessarily the norm. So I think here we're just going to go with the unexpectedly absent. Honestly, the number one thing I'm really looking for right now are blue-white lands. So we have a Vindicate, which is very, very playable. A Containment Priest, good sideboard card. Or a Chrome Mox. Hmm. All right, let's take the Vindicate here. And we did wheel Gideon, very nice. Rest in peace, Storm. I'm sorry I uh, left you alone. I don't think we saw, uh, what's it called, Yangmoth's will, but we have seen like Lion's Eye Diamond and whatnot go around, so <laughs> potentially somebody having a little bit of fun there. But I don't mind taking the Gideon. And again, just really looking for some, uh, some uh, more fixing in the last pack as we pick up an Elspeth Conqueror's Death. There is that Lingering Souls now on the wheel, but maybe I do want this land tax after all. Okay, don't think we're running any of these cards. Yeah, land tax is fixing for us. It's a shuffle effect if uh, I ever find like a top or something. I don't think I'm going to start it in the main, but you never know. Same with something like Linvala. Fine sideboard card, but don't think we're going to be main decking her unless we play against a uh, green deck with a bunch of mana dorks that she turns off. Okay. This Force of Will right now is not looking too good with as few blue cards as I have, but that's okay. We have one more pack to go, so I'm not like super concerned. I'm not overly concerned. Hey, there we go. Now look at that pack. We're obviously just going to slam the Mox Pearl here, but there's some power for you and some other great cards. Mana Vault, Strip Mine, holy smokes. Kind of hard to pass an on-color Mox, though. I do wish this was Sapphire more than Pearl, but, I mean, really shouldn't complain at all. So, yeah, we'll just take the Pearl. Easy peasy. And that's going to help this deck quite a bit. Still looking for those uh, blue-white lands, though. Ideally, a duel of some variety, since we have the Delta to go find it. Oh, man, there's the Yagmas wheel, so... Definitely could have had the uh, Storm deck, for sure. We, we would have had all the pieces, basically, but... Do have ourselves a perfectly good Teferi here. Uh, passing an Elspeth, Git Probe, Sphinx, Baleful Strix, Unmate. Lots of good cards, so we might wheel something out of this pack, even. Let's just go with Mr. Fairy. Oh man, Time Spiral is one of my favorite cards. I mean, draw seven effects in general are some of my favorite cards. Uh, if I'm not taking Time Spiral, what am I taking? Probably just the Boros Signet. I mean, I don't think the Time Spiral actually is good in this deck. In fact, it might even be better to take the Treachery here over the Boros Signet. In fact, that's probably a better idea. This card is also just busted. Let's do that. Okay, what are we looking for now? Again, this is a pretty good shell of things. Um, hmm. Let's see, how good did this gear hole get now? We picked up Force of Will, Absent, Counterspell, Path. Yeah, it's not great. Ooh, but you know what is great? Balance. 
Balance is a hell of a card, and with as many Planeswalkers as I have, it actually might be very, very good. Um, I don't like passing on color signets here, as this is a very good one, but I think the power level of, of balance is just way too good. Like, that's another card similar to like uh, what I was saying. Upheaval can get you out of positions that basically no other card can. Let's take the balance. I'm um, thinking of cutting really the uh, Soulfire Grandmaster right now, just because I didn't really get the the cheap effects that I would want for it, right? We only picked up really the counter spell. Didn't get back the Romand, haven't really seen any other cheap counters. There's a Narset though. <laughs> mm. Had I taken the uh, Time Spiral, Narset would be pretty juicy. I think here though, it's just a Sheldock Isle. We already have enough playables and, uh, playables, and even though Narset is pretty good, when I have enough playables as it is, I think the Isle is probably going to be the best choice. And this is just another very good card anyways, so it's not like I'm losing much. Wow, another great pack. Arid Mesa, Kiki Jiki, Search for his Kanta, Venser, Condemn would be fine. Hmm. I think I'm okay on creature interaction, right? I have Path, I have Tutor for any of my removal effects. Balance, Vindicate, Toxic. Treachery. Yeah, I think we probably don't need the Condemn. This might just be a search for his Kanta pick. Arid Mesa gets Godless Shrine and Plains. I don't know if that's good enough. It's probably close, though. Given I don't really need another spell. Alright, same reason that I took the Sheldock Isle. I guess we'll take the Arid Mesa. Mana Tithe, Phantasmal Image, Ulamog, Kaya, Unburial Rites. I kind of want to take the Mana Tithe here. Just for some more getcha potential. Like, I think the Image is a great card, but <laughs> I want some more counters. So let's take the Tithe. Sideboard Parallax Wave over Repeal seems good. Ooh, we could even take the Spellseeker now, actually. Spellseeker gets Balance, Counterspell, Tutor, pa Oh, yeah. Spellseeker is more than worth it here. Easy play. And now we just need to cut some cards. I mean, I think that Gear Hulk is actually a cut now at this point. Oh, yeah. Nice pickups. Nice pickups indeed. Do I want the Elspeth or do I want the Anguished? I think we just go with more Planeswalkers. Well, there's that Time Spiral on the wheel, but I don't think we're playing that. Nice. We actually got the Signet back too. All right. So the Orzov Signet could replace the Selesnya. I think we can probably cut the Sphinx's Rev. We actually have a lot of card advantage slash card draw already. Um... I think we can probably cut the Wall of Omens and sideboard it in versus... A more aggressive deck as necessary. Wow, even Moat. Moat is another really good sideboard card for us here. Because we have ways to get around it, right? We have this Elspeth jump. We have this Elspeth uh, ultimate. We have, like, Conquer's Death to kill our... Wait, does this kill? No, that doesn't kill your own things. But, yeah, we could we could easily bring in Moat versus a, a creature-based deck and maybe just get them until we buy enough time. I think the last card I want to cut here is maybe the Flicker Wisp. But... Look at those, all those wheels. We have some really good sideboard cards now, uh, especially for the aggressive decks. I think the real issue is probably going to be decks that uh, that are more controly. I mean, we have some good elements versus them, but not as many counters, for example. All right, so we do get all of these lands, which is nice. Yeah, a lot of potential playables, but I think I'm going to keep the core like this. And then run 16 land plus the mocks. Looks good to me. All of those. We only really need, what, one swamp maybe? Yeah, we have four black sources here, and then we have the Mox Diamond and the Orzov Signet, so one swamp should be fine. Right, let's go six, four, one, six, seven. No, we need to go higher on blue. 
Wait, Arid Mesa doesn't get a blue. Eight, nine. Hmm. Could even go could even go four, six, one. Hmm. Because we have a lot of white sources here. The pearl, the two signets both add white, the mox diamond adds white. I wonder if that's actually better to go like this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven white sources. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that seems good. Let's do it like that. All right, nice little Esper control deck here in Vintage Cube. Might not be the most busted thing you ever seen, but it's got some play to it. So let's go to the first round and uh, see if we can win as the match fires immediately. Okay, we are on the draw with a pretty good hand, all things considered. Um, turn two Signet into potentially a turn three Elspeth. Or Vindicate, depending on what the opponent does. These are the kind of hands, though, that you can keep, and then your opponent just goes like, turn two channel, Emrakul, and you just lose. <laughs> we'll see. Ooh, Sheldock Isle. All right, if they're playing a more control deck, we could just vindicate the Sheldock. Saves us a lot of headache later on. Oh, speaking of Sheldock, I guess we'll play our own. And three lands and a Signet. Okay, well, I guess I'm glad we're not drawing those anymore. So that tells you our opponent wasn't in the uh, same draft as us. So, who knows what they have? Who knows indeed? Big fans are good on hot days. Oh, Mock Sapphire, that's not what I want to see. Watch them play Teferi now. <laughs> No, I didn't actually mean it. Oh, God. <laughs> this is what it's come to, huh? I specifically said I didn't want to play against another control deck, really. Oh, well. Maybe I can draw my own Mox and we can kill it. We drew our own Teferi. That's pretty funny. So I guess the game plan is probably going to be to... Uh, Vindicate the Teferi next turn. I could also go for the Elspeth play, but... Hmm. I mean, I guess they might even bounce my Signet, so who knows. Unless they play an Urza now, too. Yikes. Yeah, this is not good. They are going to indeed bounce my Signet. Okay. Hmm. Well, now we have too many things that we need to deal with. I guess I'm going to go like this. Just Vindicate the Teferi now. And then next turn I can go Signet into my own Teferi and, like, kill the Urza. Oh, sorry. Bounce the token, not kill the Urza. What do we get from the sideboard versus them? Probably Tithe Taker. Probably Sphinx's Rev. Um, maybe Soulfire Grandmaster. Crucible of Worlds with Flooded Strand. Oh boy, I wonder if they have Strip Mine in their deck too. Pretty good, pretty good. They got something to play. I can actually cast something for four mana here because of the uh, Urza tapping both of their artifacts. Yeah, looks like they're going to do something. Solemn Simulacrum, wow. That is a pretty good start. 
Hmm. We have a lot of different threats we need to deal with. Unfortunately. And not really the resources right now to deal with them, especially since we're on the draw. They got first punch at us. Alright, let's bounce the construct, just get rid of it. It's getting too big anyways. There's a good hit. Oh wow, that was a really good hit actually. Okay, so maybe next turn Conquer's Death on Urza could save us here. As our Teferi is going to bite the dust. I mean, we haven't seen any counters from them, so I guess that's slight silver lining. I am worried about that Sheldock Isle, though. Between their draw step and Crucible of Worlds. Oh, and now Ashiok. What did they steal? Typhoon Treachery Diamond. Yikes. Bad, bad, bad. <sighs> oh, and they can revoke my Signet now, too. All right, so I guess I'm just going to Conquer's Death the uh, Ashiok now. This is bad news, bears. Yeah. They did, in fact, name the Signet. Vampiric Tutor was probably not a bad hit. All right, Elspeth. Eat that Ashiok, please. And then what do I upkeep? Or do I upkeep, rather? Do I upkeep my Vampiric Tutor? Get like balance or something. Balance would make me discard quite a few cards though. So they play the land from their graveyard, yes. Oh, you know what I could do? I could Vampiric for balance, cast balance, and then uh, cast Elspeth. Yeah, I think we're probably going to want a balance here. So let's do this. Go get balance. I think, yeah. Get balance. The problem is, if I balance, I'm going to have to discard my big Elspeth. But I guess that's okay, because I can get her back next turn with the uh, Conqueror's Death if we really want to. So I'm discarding Elspeth, Sun's Champion, in order to wipe their board. They're going to get Scarab got back afterwards, yes. They draw a card from Solemn, yes. But now we get a Jam Mommy and make a token. And depending on what they do, I guess we can decide if we want to get the Sun's Champion back or the uh, Teferi back. But now we're not looking too bad, actually. If they crack their fetch immediately, I'm going to be a little bit concerned what's underneath the Sheldock Isle. Three cards in hand. Okay. That is not the ideal draw for us. Um... Hmm. 
So I guess I can just get Teferi back. Teferi stops their Sheldock Isle if they don't respond here. And we can just, like, bounce the god. Hope to find a counter or something. Oh, click's pretty good, too. And because we have Teferi on the battlefield, we can just uh, attack for four. We're going to go ahead and click them on their... Uh, Click them on their draw step. Now remember, the Sheldock Isle doesn't actually work because of the Teferi. So they might have they made a slight mistake there, not uh, not casting it in response, whatever it is. Unfortunate that we had such a bad hit underneath ours. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to take their uh, Scarab God, but we'll see what else is in their hand now. I mean, they have five cards. Factor Fiction, too. Yikes. All right. Well, I guess I take the Factor Fiction instead. Actually, hmm. Maybe maybe neither of these are relevant enough. If they factor fiction, they're going to have access to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 mana afterwards. Oh, no, I guess I do need to take the Scarab God. Because they can play Scarab God and activate immediately. Yeah, never mind. Which means they'd be able to get back Revoker, turn off one of my Planeswalkers, for example. Nope. You can't you still can't shell dock even if it's your main phase. Not with Teferi out. It is a weird interaction, to be fair, but this is something to note. While while the opponent has a Teferi, you can never cast something off of Shell Dock Isle or any of the uh, hideaway lands. Okay, so Signet into Foth is going to be their play, most likely. They decided not to play the Shambling Vent out, which is maybe also a mistake, because I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to start gaining life there. Oh, and they just passed without even using the Factor Fiction. I think they forgot about the Teferi or something. Anyway. We're going to pump the Soldier Token here, hit them for 7. And uh, that'll put them dead to click by itself next turn. Ah, opponent, you're forgetting about the Teferi. Sorry. Yeah, and that, this is what I was saying. Teferi just ruins some people. <laughs> ruins some decks, that is to say. Um, so, like I said, Sphinx's Rev could be okay versus them. Tithe Taker seems okay as just some early pressure. I think I can probably cut the Toxic. Um... Don't think I need any of these. Eh. Yeah, Sphinx's Rev is fine. I think I like the path still. They had the Urza and more importantly, like the uh, Scarab God that that hits. Yeah, maybe I don't need the Tithe Taker. They didn't have any counters, right? Not that I recall. So we'll just bring in the uh, 
Bring the Sphinx's Rev for the more controlly matchup, and probably Mulligan this hand. Too slow. Uh oh. Guess we're going to five, because that hand can't do anything either. All right, we'll keep this and pitch the Sun Titan and one of our planes, hoping to draw an island in the first two draw steps. But we might be able to go turn three Elspeth. Hell, even if, if, I, like if I draw a Signet, we can go turn two Elspeth. That wouldn't be shabby. Hmm. All right, we'll just play the Shrine and pass. There is merit there to playing the island, though, because now that I've played the Shrine, if I draw an island next turn, I won't be able to go island, pearl, into click. But it's okay, I think. And yeah, we're not even gonna not even gonna play out our pearl. Don't want to give them a target for something to kill or whatever. All right, opponent resolves an impulse. Please no Ashiok. Oh, Monastery Mentor is also pretty gross. Oh, Mentor into Sapphire. Okay, maybe I do need to bring the Toxic Deluge back in if we go to a game three, because that's kind of that's kind of bad for us. Oh, where was Manatide last turn? All right, I mean, this is not even that great if they just have a single removal spell for my... Uh, token they get to kill Elspeth here, but I think this is better than playing out the mana tithe, or holding up the mana tithe, I should say. Okay, another artifact, this time a signet. into a Vindicate of their own. Oh, boy. <sighs> well, I guess I'm going to need to draw that balance. Right? I didn't take out the balance. Yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead and take all of it. Okay, I mean, that does give us the Elspeth Conqueror's death. But not exactly thrilling. I will definitely block if they attack. If they don't cast anything, then we do get to trade with one of the tokens at least. Solemn Simulacrum, sure. All right, Elspeth is going to go to two. Overgrown Tomb? What on earth are they going to run green for, I wonder? Green-white Signet, not exactly what we were hoping to draw there. All right, I mean, best case scenario, I guess... They tap out for something, and we get to mana tithe it, but that doesn't seem very likely with as many mana sources as they have. Although I guess everything costs two more because of the Elspeth Conqueror's death, so... Blech. And now we kind of just die to that, I guess. In fact, they could have bounced one of their own artifacts and hit me for, what, 8 damage here if they really wanted to. I mean, I don't think they bounce my Elspeth Conquerors, do they? I guess it doesn't matter. They did draw a card. Oh, man, that's actually brutal that they bounced the... Uh, 
the Signet, because now I can't cast out Elspeth this turn. Otherwise, I would have been able to. Oh, no. She might have saved us. Wow, we actually got wrecked by them bouncing that Signet. And I can't cast either of these because, well, one, I don't have double blue, and Mana Tithe, obviously, in a Teferi world doesn't do much. All right, everything's going face. I'm going to block one of the monks. Go to two. No plays, though. All right, let's make another 1-1 one, one here. And let's try to play this Elspeth. Mana leak. Yep, yeah, that'll be good enough. GG's. Go to game number three. Do I bring in the Toxic again? Oh, I'm debating it. But all in all, I don't think I actually need it. I mean, that was a mulligan to five, so... Let's just try not to mulligan to five this game, which this is a sp off to a bad start, as we are going to have to mulligan to a minimum of six. Oh, gosh. Well, this is pretty unfortunate. I don't really think I can keep this hand. I think we just have to hope for a better five, and wow. Guess I don't really get to play much magic here. I have to go to four and hope. Man. No love. Um... I mean, Sphinx's Rev doesn't do anything, so let's just take the Spell Seeker, I suppose. Oh, that feels bad. Mulligan issues for the loss. I mean, if I'm going to draw something on turn two, I suppose the Signet <laughs> is not terrible. As they have Brainstorm plus Fetch. Very nice. No fetch, though. They liked their cards. That's concerning. Found another white source. Yay, me. Uh, I'm probably going to cycle a Typhoon here, EOT. As they have their Overgrown Tomb again. Hmm. I guess the Overgrown Tomb is for the Misty Rainforest to find a black source. Oh, and maybe for Golos? Oh my. We did see a red signet from them too. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Oh well, Mulligan to 5, Mulligan to 4. Okay, Teferi, interesting. I think I do like bouncing the Golos here. Buying a little bit of time. Maybe we find a counter? No, Mox Diamond, that's no good. All right. Attack for two. Oh, you know what would actually be a really good draw? Balance. Because <laughs> I could empty my hand. Make them discard basically all of theirs. Oh, there's Ashiok, sure. Ashiok hits Manatithe, Treachery, and Gideon. Okay. No plays after that, though. Hey, that's not bad. All right, so let's uptick to fairy. We can play the Mox Diamond to allow us to Vampiric Tutor. Attack the Ashiok for two. Hmm. Yeah, 
yeah, maybe there's hope for us yet. All right, polluted delta, arid mesa, oof, and they hit my sun titan. That's too bad. One more activation of Ashiok, and the uh, Sheldok Isles are active too. All right, here comes Golos for the second time. It's actually bad that I have the shark because now balance doesn't like wipe their board and their hand. But we're definitely casting it. Let's go get our best card in the deck, whatever that may be. Hmm. I have how much? One, two, three, four, five, six mana. I could go get Elspeth, Sun's Champion. That doesn't seem terrible. Teferi doesn't do it. Rev doesn't do it. I mean, if I get Elspeth Knight Errant, I can attack and kill the Ashiok. Maybe that's better. Oh, you know what? Maybe Elspeth Conquers Death is better. Because presumably the opponent's going to kill the Teferi. Yeah, I kind of like that. Let's get Elspeth Conquers Death. Get rid of their Ashiok. I think this is better than getting rid of their Golos. This could actually be wrong, though. But I think Ashiok is also just going to kill me if I don't. And then I'll not attack with the Shark. If they want to kill Teferi, make them activate their Tar Pit. I mean, honestly, for a mulligan to... Uh, to four, at least we made some some progress. Not that I think we're in great shape, but okay, impulse. Into an Emery. Oh, interesting. Milled booter, free booter that is, Urza and two lands. Oh, they can activate the Shell Dock Isle now. Oh, no, they can't, because I have Teferi. They messed up again. They keep forgetting that I have Teferi, which means they just don't can't ever activate it. <laughs> Whoopsies. I don't know if they just keep forgetting or what, but. Oh, wait a minute. Can they activate Golos? They have the green, blue, black, white, red. Wow, they can. They can actually activate Golos next turn with the Boro Signet. Oh, that's kind of problematic, too. And this, and Golos does get around to Fairy because it, um, as long as they're casting it on main phase. All right, we'll jump. Protect our Teferi. Ooh, drew another Teferi. Oh, holy crap. Am I? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I 
I think we're really close to winning. Well, not winning, but wrecking them if... Uh, we need to hit a land here. If we draw a land off of Teferi, this is absurd. Sphinx's Rev, damn. Could have also opted to bounce the Elspeth Conqueror's death. Hmm. I was gonna say if we if we hit a land there, I play the land. The Teferi untaps two. I get to um, use the shell dock and then balance immediately. But now I'm a mana short, and I would be able to balance at instant speed. Okay, so I guess we're just gonna uptick, untap the shell dock, and another land. And we're praying that uh, if they do activate Golos, it doesn't find anything. Fortunately for us, all of their non-creature spells cost two more. Alright, they sent both at Teferi, but we get to flash in our Spell Seeker and block the Golos. I could even get Path to Exile now if I wanted to. Oh, but they could still activate in response. So let's just get the balance. Chump. Teferi falls down to three. See if they go for the uh, Golos activation. I feel like they are. One, two, three, four. Yep. Let's see it. Good luck. Land to fairy demonic tutor. Okay. Oh, they can't cast any of them because I have Elspeth Conquers Death on two. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, this is even more amazing than I originally thought. Huh. Oh, this is crazy. So we... Oh, we can... Oh, no, I don't actually want to return my Spell Seeker. Oh, I guess I have to. Well, let's go get Counter Spell then. Hmm. Oh, I was going to Instant Speed Balance, but I forgot I was going to get back my Spell Seeker. Interesting. I mean, Counterspell doesn't seem awful. Path doesn't seem awful. Oh, you know what? I think I found the play. I think I do grab path. Uptick to fairy. Play land. I don't... Th hmm. I guess I can leave them with one card if I want to. I was thinking I'm gonna path there, path my own spell seeker. Then, because I have Teferi active, I can cast Sphinx's Rev, and then in response to Sphinx's Rev, cast Balance. And get rid of their hand and leave them with Creeping Tar Pit versus nothing. Oh, I can just do that now. What am I talking about? I can just make that play now. Disregard me. Uh, sure, swamp. And then we go like this. Woo. OK. 
cast Sphinx's Rev for one, and then with that on the stack, cast Balance. So now I have no cards in my hand. They're gonna have to discard all four of their cards. I have no creatures, so they're gonna have to sack all of their creatures. And then I get to draw one with Sphinx's Rev and then draw another with a Teferi. <laughs> oh, yeah. What a play. Oh my gosh, what a beating. And now I can untap these two. And I can actually time walk them here. We can tuck their Signet. So that's the next card that they draw. Their only play is going to be to attack with the Tar Pit. I can then, on the following turn, Vindicate the Tar Pit. And as long as I have this Teferi, their Sheldock Isle is irrelevant. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, How on earth? This is crazy. <laughs> this is insanity. All right, activate Teferi, draw extra card with Teferi, play my lands. On their draw step, flash and click, see what they drew. And with Teferi, they can never cast anything in response. They drew Crucible of Worlds. We oh, I do actually need to take that because I'm about to tar pit the. Uh, sorry, I'm about to vindicate the tar pit. So let them activate. Let them go to attacks. Because they very clearly have something they really want underneath that Sheldock Isle. Now, of course, I could just vindicate the Sheldock Isle itself, but we want to get rid of the Creeping Tar Pit anyways. This is great. Good draw. Let's uptick. Draw an extra card. Play out Elspeth. And we'll make a token, I guess. It's not a two-turn clock. Right, because if I um, if I give the click plus three, it's only six damage over the course of three turns. Oh, we're at Teferi Ultimate, aren't we? We are. Crazy. Didn't even notice. Oh, did they draw Vindicate? They did! Wow, good draw. All right, so what's underneath the Shell Dock now? We've waited all this time. What's under the boat? All right, I'm going to ultimate to ferry. I am scared and confused at what they could have here. Wish I could somehow draw an extra card too, but let's just attack for six in the air. All right, what do you have? What is it this whole time? Yorian? What on earth? Okay. Interesting. Trade, all right. Huh. Not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting that. Can they beat the Teferi emblem is the question. Slash, can I kill them fast enough? Oh, that's a great draw. Alright, let's get rid of their only black source. We can put them on a three-turn clock here with the soldier getting the... Uh, Plus three, plus three each turn. OK. 
Okay, another island. And they have nothing! Holy smokes! What a mulligan to four! Dude, that one turn I was able to flash out balance in response to Sphinx's rev and then activate this fairy. Oh, what a game! Freaking hour-long video and we only completed the first match. Ay ay ay. Oh man, still still reeling after that first match, but here we are for round number two of this vintage cube. We are on the play, and this time we have a keepable seven. Crazy. I know. Does need to find some more land, yes, but having access to counterspell and force of will is pretty good. Obviously, to cast this I need another blue source, but I'm definitely not gonna mulligan this hand. Giver of Runes. Okay, so they're probably on the white aggro deck. I'm going to let that resolve and not bother forcing it. Great draw. We have a lot of good cards versus them. We have Toxic, Deluge, and Balance as probably the top two, though. As they are going to attack with the Giver. This makes sense. Unlike um, Mother of Runes, Giver cannot protect itself. Path to Exile, also a pretty decent draw. And I'm just going to preemptively grab um, Balance here. We can also make that play again of pathing my own creature and then balancing. Although, I guess that kind of defe defeats the point as uh, I would get an extra land, but I would make them sack more creatures. All right, maybe red-white aggro then. My shields are down for now. Okay, I mean, this is a good attack for us as now we just made our balance better. And they're just going to pass. Okay, this is good for us. If we just play the draw-go game, that definitely favors this deck, I would think. Hope we can find a land here, or a Signet, or Mox. We're just looking for mana sources right now. What you got, opponent? Okay, that's fine. Um, I actually don't need to run that out. I guess it's better to hold up Counterspell. I don't want to be forced to use Force. Right? No, never mind. We do want to run out the Signet, I lied. Because this way, if I draw on a land next turn, I can just slam the Teferi. Gideon. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that seems like something I should probably counter. And I'm going to go ahead and pitch the counter spell to do so. Let's draw land here. Oof, bad draw. Bad draw. Maybe I should have kept my counter spell? I don't know. Pretty awkward now, because I'm not holding up any counters. The thing is, I can't path the Gideon, because they have the giver in theory. I mean, I guess I could have balanced. I could have let Gideon resolve, then balance. And if they use Gideon to make a 5-5, five five, uh, then I could path it, in, I guess. But Alright, Stoneforge Mystic.
What sword do you have? Uh, so versus them, we're going to get access to quite a few good cards. Can get the Baneslayer, can get Condemn, Parallax, can get um, Wall of Omens, can get Moat. Skull Clamp. Ooh, that's pretty good. Hmm. Interesting. That does make my balance worse, as they'll be able to redraw two cards. What if they move it over to the Stone Forge now? No? Okay. Gonna be really, really sad if they have Mana Tithe. Okay, no Mana Tithe, that's good. Let's draw a card. Get to untap Plains and Island. Zealous conscripts. Oh, gross. Yeah, nothing I can do about that. They can steal my Teferi now for a turn if they want to and, like, tuck itself. <laughs> yep, good play. Alright, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, they played a land this turn, right? No, they haven't played a land yet this turn. Wait, right? Yeah, they haven't played a land yet, so three, four, five, six, seven. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and take seven then. And then path the giver after the fact, and then balance. I think, is the play. Okay. So now we can... Balance here, make them sack both their creatures and two lands. Nobody has to discard anything. And then I have to decide if I want to, like, kill the Sacred Foundry, kill the Skull Clamp, or not kill anything. They did sack their Red Source, though. Okay, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to get Godless Shrine. and vindicate the Sacred Foundry now. Next turn we can Sun Titan back our Spell Seeker. This does make our Toxic Deluge much worse, but we are also redrawing into Teferi soon. Empty Fairgrounds Warden, I love it. Alright, let's Sun Titan back the Spell Seeker. Go get ourselves. I don't think we want. Oh, I shuffled away my Teferi. Do I want to grab my Vampiric Tutor? Go to four. They are playing a little bit of red, but it just might be a splash. Eh, we'll go ahead and grab the Tutor. If they attack with the Fairgrounds, I'm going to chump with the Spell Seeker so that uh, we don't give them two cards. Hmm. 
I'm kind of at a precarious life total. What else can we go get? A lot of fine cards, nothing that gains life, though. All right, land number five. And they're going to immediately path my Sun Titan. That works. Guess we'll go get another white source here. All right. Ooh, into Ravages of War. So now, all right, I mean, they had, I guess they had it. If I Vamp Tutor, I go to four, Chump, like get a land, no. So I don't actually think I can afford to do anything here. All right, looks like they might get me still. Damn, it's too bad. Well played, well played. Okay, well technically if I draw a white source, we're not dead. Oh, one land and we would be okay. GG's though, GG's. All right, so condemn in, wall of omens in, moat in, bane slayer probably in. Can cut the conquers. Can cut the absent. Treachery actually looked really bad versus them, and can probably cut the mana tithe. And then go to game number two. Okay, game number two of the second round. We are down a game, but we will be on the play. Hand looks fine. Um, we'll play the Godless Shrine tapped first so that we can hold open Condemn next turn. There's their Giver of Runes again. There's our second white source, beautiful. And we'll go ahead and condemn that. And maybe vindicate their next play or something, depending on what they do here. Oh, the actual Mother of Runes. Hey, that's a good draw, though. Can they beat a moat? That's the question. Now we're just going to slam the Teferi and uh, start drawing extra cards. Pretty sure if they had Mana Tide, they would have countered the Moat. Oh, Council's Judgment! Boo! All right, well, they did have a way to get rid of the Moat. All that means is that I get to resolve Mr. Fairy. And let's just immediately start drawing. Nice hit. So now we can untap. Hold up Vampiric Tutor. Bremaz is good. Uh, we want to go get Toxic here, or what? I want to get something. I guess I could just grab Elspeth. Yeah, we can just grab Big Elspeth. 
hopefully draw like counterspell here would be amazing. Mox Diamond. All right, we will play that instead. Better versus there. Armageddon's. And so they, what they can do is they can uh, aggressively give like Brima's protection from white to attack in if they want to. But it looks like we're in pretty good shape here. I mean, I didn't really think hard about the Vampiric Tutor. There was probably something better to get. I guess the good thing about game one is that I never showed them the um, Toxic. So they might not be expecting a second Wrath effect. Although I guess I haven't even cast Balance this game, so... Sword of Fire and Ice. That is unfortunate. Uh, so they can give uh, Brima's pro-white now and with the sword get in. I mean, I guess they don't get to kill the Teferi, but they do get to kill the Elspeth if they make that play. Yep. And I still have to worry about their uh, them finding... Um, Who's a what's it called? Zealous Conscripts. If I get too careless and don't find a counter spell. Who are they attacking here? Yeah, they are killing Elspeth. Darn. Okay. Gideon now, a fine draw. Um, hmm. I think I'm just going to keep drawing, though. All right. Another land's good. Gideon. Make a 2-2. Two, two. I'm going to kill the mom now. Oh, well, didn't untap lands, but it doesn't really matter. Still worried about them finding zealous conscripts, stealing my Teferi, and then ultimating on me. Fairgrounds Warden kill the 2-2, two, two. that's fine. We will definitely block, and we'll go ahead and trade. A lot of good draws, but I might need to just, like, to ferry minus three on the Bremaz, depending on what I do draw. Sun Titan, that's pretty good. Hmm. Oh, I can't tuck this, it's pro blue. <laughs> I could tuck the sword, though. Which isn't bad. Oh, man. 
it's so bad if I Teferi uptick and they do have conscripts is the thing. Like, I can probably win without doing that, I would guess. It is very tempting, though. Hmm. No, let's play it safe. Let's tuck the sword. Make a 2-2. Two -two. Play the Sun Titan. Get back Arid Mesa. And just pass from here. Oh, if they have the conscripts, it's still going to be bad. But it looks like they don't. Nice. All right. And that's going to probably be pretty close to GG. Click's a great draw. Now we can be a little bit more aggro. Draw a card. Make another 2-2. Two -two. Attack for 6. Get back Arid Mesa, which can go get our last planes out of the deck. Go ahead and click them this turn to see what they have. Alright, and we'll go to game three. Very nice. Game three. Alright, well, after seeing both mom and stepmom, I guess the Linval is probably worth bringing in as well. Um... Yeah, I mean, I might want Parallax Wave, too. can probably cut Shark Typhoon as it's a little bit slow and dirtily. And maybe Click versus them is actually not very good, and we'd rather just have more, more ways to deal with their creatures. All right, game three. On the draw here... This is probably a keep. It's not uh, ideal, but we have all of our colors. So, good enough. Turn one, Giver of Runes again. Let's just play the Black Source tapped, and then we can Vampiric. That was a good draw. Can go find a Wrath effect. Skull clamp or sword? Sword it is. Hmm. No attacks. Play the shrine tapped and pass. Hoping that they play another creature here and not just go for the sword play. Attack for one, yeah. They don't have a land though, huh, okay. Hmm, so if they're going to flash out the sword, it might actually be better for me to just go grab Toxic and wipe the board for now. Toxic for two, they can flash out the sword in response.
And then if they play a creature here, I can just Teferi bounce it, buy some time, then go for Parallax. Yeah, Bremaz is good. Ooh, we even actually get to Shell Dock here if we want. I mean, I am concerned. Like, Ravages of War is going to be a beating here. But they've been missing land drops, so they need to develop out something first before they can go for that. I think. Okay, just Bremaz again, that's fine. <laughs> Moat's a funny draw. Safer to get the Parallax Wave online first, though. Relic Warder. This, I don't think, works the way they want it to work. Wait, or does it? Now, if I eat their Relic Warder... Doesn't this just permanently exile everything? If I eat the Relic Order, the second trigger resolves. Yeah, this just permanently exiles everybody's. I believe is how this works. It's just like the old O-Ring. Oh, wait. No, it's not. Shoot. I messed up. I was supposed to leave their... Oh, crap. <laughs> I was supposed to leave their... Uh... Oh, well, that was a goof. I was supposed to leave their Relic Order alive. Man, that... That Counterspell was actually an insane draw versus Ravages. Oh, big old goof. Stupid. Stupid me. So, what I should have done is just eaten the Brimaz, let their Leonin resolve, right? Then my Parallax Wave would be underneath... Yeah, it would... Ah. We'd have the same scenario, except I would still have Parallax Wave available, so I just self-punted. <sighs> But hopefully they don't find an answer to my uh, to my moat for a little while, which would give us time to get the shell dock active with the bane slayer. I guess that's our hope. Dang, that was a bad play. <laughs> uh, sir, would you like a parallax wave or no parallax wave? The option is yours. Please, no conscripts. If they conscripts and steal... Well, rather, if they have conscripts, I have to debate countering it, because if I don't, then they Teferi, minus Teferi, kill it. Bounce the moat. Attack for 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I, I would have to counter Zealous Conscripts if they have it. So let's just go with the play of uh, not letting them have it or hoping they don't have it. There's that judgment. All right. Got to counter it, unfortunately. Unfortunately. 
Now we want to draw like Force of Will, I guess, is our best draw. Oof, land is really bad. Well, I don't really need the Teferi anymore. It might actually be best to just let it go. <laughs> uh, okay. I guess I hold lands versus Armageddon. These are not the draws we were looking for, though. Recruiter of the Guard, yes. What can that go find? Do they have another creature that can get rid of Moat? Mmm, Walking Ballista, okay. Given enough time, that can kind of do stuff. I wonder if they just want to draw cards, though. Yeah, Skull Clamp. <sighs> Ooh, they didn't find a land, though. Condemn. I guess we'll play one land and pass. We can Bane Slayer next turn. I'm interested to see if they decide to Armageddon this turn because of the Shell Dock being active next turn. Very possible. And maybe that's why they didn't like play a land last turn. They could definitely have some lands in their hand and just be waiting to go Armageddon first. Gideon, okay. No Armageddon, then. That's fine. Yeah, equip the Skull Clamp. That's fine. All right. So at the very least, we're going to have a Bane Slayer. Hell, and a Gideon of our own, how about? We can work with this. <laughs> okay, four mana, five mana. Zealous? Steal my Gideon? Wouldn't do much. They wouldn't be able to activate it because they would have to sack one immediately. Oh, man. <sighs> nope, looks like a walking ballista, perhaps. Oh, they are going to Ravage. Okay. Well, now I have a little Bane friend. Hello. They could have Path in their hand, of course. I think we saw Path from them, what, game one? Well, this is why we didn't play out all of our lands. Is this just walking blister for one? Oh, wait. Absent on my moat. Interesting. Okay. So I'm drawing moat next turn. Huh. Very interesting. I 
All right, let's just make a 2-2 immediately and kill Gideon. Gain 5 in the process. And then hold up Condemn. Fairgrounds Warden, my Bane Slayer. Sure. Okay. Hmm. I guess we block here and chump here. I'm going to save the uh, Condemn now that they Fairgrounds Wardened me. Because they might actually attack with the Fairgrounds Warden. And so the game plan is, if they do attack with the Fairgrounds Warden, um, Condemn it, get my Bane Slayer back. Nice, nice. I'm still worried about their swords or their path to exile, though. Uh, but what other ways did we see for them to get rid of an enchantment? I don't actually recall if there was anything beyond judgment, was there? And now the absent, of course. But if we find another land, we get to land moat again. They're pausing on upkeep for something. Maybe they have the uh, Enlightened Tutor? What other reason would they pause on upkeep? En enlightened Tutor... Um... I don't know. But the opponent only has 3 minutes and 20 seconds, so if they're not thinking a little bit hastily here, they do run the risk of timing out. Man, what a crazy game this has been. I'm only sad that I had to, or I think I had to, throw away the Teferi when I did. Oh, they did disconnect. All right, I'm going to pause the video here then, and then we'll resume when they come back. Okay, opponent came back after just over a minute. And yeah, we're still on the upkeep, and they are dangerously close to just timing out here. They still have that walking ballista in hand too, so... If they really want to kill the Gideon, they can always just walking ballista plus ping for one. Looks like they might walking ballista for two though here instead. Yep. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna shoot down the knight. Okay. Well now we're probably gonna get them with condemn on the fairgrounds warden, unless they play around it. They're not. Excellent. Condemn the Fairgrounds Warden. Block the Relic Ordered one. Gain 5 life. Oh, yeah. And now, I think we're still going to poop out tokens, but we can uh, Mox Diamond into Moat. Attack for 5 in the air, gain 5 life. You fight internet troubles, so that can happen. I mean, I think they make that play anyways. All right. Oof, very close, but that condemn getting back our Bane Slayer Angel was busted. All right, we're 2 and 0. It's uh we're pushing 2 hour draft already. Let's see if we can get there on the last match. Oh man. Okay, the final round, round 3 of this vintage cube draft with our Esper control deck. We have had some crazy matches. On the play here, ooh, with kind of a questionable hand. But the thing is, balance is so good 
I think it's worth risking it to keep this. Hopefully we just draw a blue source off the top, but balance does a lot of work at stabilizing. Oh no! Well, not if our opponent knows about it slash takes it. Ugh. Thought seizes. So good. So good. That makes a lot of sense. Good news for me, we did draw the blue source. I'm not gonna play it out yet though. Don't want them to know I have it just yet. Okay, well, now they're gonna know about it. <laughs> so that takes non-creatures, so they can only take one of these. They can't take the spell seeker, fortunately. Turn one, discard. Turn two, pseudo discard. Hmm. Question is, what now do we grab? We have Counterspell, we have Vampiric, Path. If we grab Vampiric, then we can go grab something else. Yeah, let's grab Vampiric. Take our one in the air. Oh, and no plays. Excellent. Hmm. We might not vampiric uh, until we get some more information. I don't really care if they kill my spell seeker if that's what they're gonna do. Oh, and tomb. Uh oh. Wait a minute. As I. Slap my chair around. <laughs> um, Inferno Titan, okay. Him! Alright, I think we fire off the Vampiric now then. And, man, I want to grab a Planeswalker, but they're just not good. I guess I could grab Teferi. Uh, that seems medium. Put Counterspell on top doesn't seem very good. <laughs> Grab Vindicate, blow up a land, and uh, that doesn't seem good enough. I guess Teferi might be okay. Alright, they didn't hit Toxic, which is kind of nice. I think I'm just going to Teferi uptick here. This way if they reanimate their Inferno Titan next turn, it doesn't kill it. Oh, they're still attacking me. They're not even attacking the Teferi. Huh. Okay, well, now I'm going to attack for one and then bounce my Spellseeker since they made this play. I'm not streaming, but I am recording. And then I might just grab Mana Tithe here. Arid Mesa doesn't grab a... Uh, blue source. It grabs white and black, I believe. Let's double check. Arid Mesa. Yeah, no blue. Actually, grabbing absent is also kind of funny. Tuck their freebooter so they have to redraw it. Yeah, I'm gonna grab the absent.
Maybe grabbing counter spells better, but I mean, I don't have much pressure right now. I just have a nice mana advantage. <laughs> Still sending it to the face. Interesting. No plays again. Okay. Not sure about that play from them, but I accept. Uptick. Play out Signet and pass. Do they have a land in their hand now? Okay, there's their blue, there's third mana. Oh man, frantic search. All right. They only get to untap two lands here, fortunately. Atarka and Sundering Titan. <laughs> Into, oh, just a pack rat, Never mind. we're fine. So now I'm going to go ahead and I think fire off the Toxic. For two. Protect our uh, Teferi as well as getting back our Typhoon among other things. Oh man, this Mana Tithe is going to be juicy, I bet you. Oh, you know what? I should probably tuck the Mox Diamond as well. They've been missing lands, and even though they did just frantic, I think I like doing this. Make them redraw the mocks for the turn. Brutal. Yeah, I mean, if they missed a land drop, then that's going to be GG, basically. Go ahead and cycle this end of turn. That's a good draw. Sheldock Isle, find another Planeswalker, hopefully. Oh my god, what terrible hits! Holy smokes. I mean, I guess I'm glad that we don't... We aren't drawing those anymore, but my god. I think I'm going to actually draw an extra card here, since I need to find just a little bit more action, but... This is actually kind of absurd. Now we're just flooding out. How many mana sources in a row was that? A lot is the answer. Sheldock saw, what, three lands, Mox Diamond. I drew a card with Teferi, drew another land. All right, here's their Diamond. Discards another land. Let's see if I can counter something for three mana. Nope, I can't counter that. Buried Alive, Bolas. They did find a land. Oh boy, I might have a problem. Reanimate Sundering Titan. Wait. Did they just kill themselves? They're at three now versus my shark. Well, now wait a minute. Aren't they just dead on board? <laughs> Whoopsies. They needed to get a Tarka. Oh my god, I have no idea what's going on. I feel like I've gotten very, very lucky to win any of these matches. Yeah. Um, versus Reanimator. I guess Condemn? No, we have a lot of good cards versus Reanimator already. Yeah, I don't even know if I want any of these. Honestly, let's just run it back. One game away from a 3-0. and Can we get it? Our hand is pretty darn good. Turn one, assuming they don't have a Thoughtseize, I get to go Sheldock Isle and Pearl, hold up Mana Tithe. 
Turn two, spell seeker. Turn three, prophet, as they say. All right, nice. No thought sees. Maybe Sheldock Isle will find something for once. It does. It found an Elspeth. Counter the Freebooter. Might as well. Let's go spell seeking. Probably just grab counter spell here. Although I guess I could grab the Vampiric. Uh, I like grabbing the counter spell. We actually have enough action since we have the Typhoon in our hand as well. Pack Rat. Hmm. I will need to find a another white source for that, but I guess I can always just cycle Shark Typhoon if they go for that play. Yep. All right, they are going to make another rat. That's fine. Let's trade with the first one. We can always just toxic now, if necessary. They discarded an Inferno Titan. So I'm going to go Watery Grave here and pass. I'll block this pack rat. If they attack, they will probably pitch another card, and then I'll fire toxic next turn. Reanimate Inferno Titan now. Uh, that's fine. We let that resolve. Because our our game plan is just a toxic next turn anyways. I might take an, a little bit extra damage, but this is okay. Save save the counter spell for a different uh, different problem. Let's go Toxic, 6, go to 11, but kill the Titan and the Pack Rat. And then I could click them on Draw Step. I guess I'm going to do that instead of holding up Counterspell this turn. Oh, Fencer. Fencer bounce my click, maybe? <laughs> Sure, that's fine. Ooh, we'll save Treachery for a big creature since they are Reanimator after all. All right, let's go for the click again. What do you got in there, a friend? Exhum and Nicol Bolas. Hmm. The funny thing is, I actually want their Exhum to resolve. And then I can Treachery. So I'm actually not going to take anything here. They know I have the counter spell in my hand. This is bait. We're going to bait them real good. Yep, resolves. I get back my Spell Seeker, you get back Vandillion, or rather, you get back Inferno Titan. This is exact, exactly what we want to happen. Because we're only, excuse me, we're only going to take three damage this turn. They're going to kill both my creatures and then ping me for one. Um, do I want to grab Tutor here? Let's see. Yes, we want to grab Vampiric. This is going to go very well. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they scoop in a turn or two because um, I'm going to Vampiric down to six, but we know what the last card in their hand is. I'm going to go grab Teferi now. 
Grab five mana to fairy. Now we treachery their Inferno Titan. Untap all five of our lands. Play to fairy, uptick. Draw a card, hold up counterspell. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Eventually we'll find our second white source, but... What can they do versus such recklessness? <laughs> and now I get Elspeth next turn off of Sheldock? Oh, baby. I guess we're just looking for our last counter, Force of Will. Hey! It's that easy, everybody. It's really that easy. Attack for six, ping the Venser for two, and them for one. <laughs> oh, this is golden. Activate Sheldock, play the Elspeth, make three tokens. End of turn, untap two lands. And now we're holding up double counter. They are dead on board currently. Is this what it's like to have it all? Feels like it. GG's! All right, ladies and gentlemen, how was that? Those were some crazy games, crazy matches, but we managed to pull off the 3-0 with a nice little Esper deck here. Um, yeah, first first vintage cube I've done with all of the new added cards, so it feels good to 3-0. I don't think our deck was particularly busted, but we had some really good counterplay to to all of what we've done. Anyways, this was a two hour long video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to check out all of my other content here on the Card Kingdom YouTube channel. You can catch out my stream daily at twitch.tv slash Thanks for watching. This was a good one.